want to learn how to extend Craft Pi 4 with a custom plugin, then stay tuned. Hello, let's start to develop the first custom plugin. Here I have opened the Visual Studio code, um, which is used, for example, to code some Python or JavaScript. So first of all, I have an uh, empty uh, workspace folder. Uh, my, my one is uh, CBPI, my plugin. Name is, uh, name is not that important. Can be any folder. First step, you want to um, create a virtual Python environment. So type Python 3 minus N, VNF, and the name of the environment is VNF. So virtual VI environment created. We set it as default. Here you can see the new folder. Next step is we activate the, um, the environment source um, VNF um, bin activate. Now we can see that the virtual environment is active. Next step is we install CraftBeerPy pip install craft uh, CBPI. Now it's downloading all uh, the required um, sources, including all dependencies. This takes a few seconds and um, then we are ready to start development. So now it's installing and done. Next step is we need some basic configuration, CBPI uh, setup. So this will now create some basic configuration folder and some log folder um, where some log data is stored. So folders are created on the left hand side here you see the config folder is available and the logs folder is available. That's fine. Now we want to try to start CraftPI. So CBPI start. Oops. It's up and running on port 80. So we go here. We double check. Yes, refresh. We reload here. Yes, it's up and running. So we can configure some custom kettle. Save. Fine. Okay, now let's create a plugin. We stop the server with Control C, and the next one is CBPI create the command to create a custom plugin. Now we need to provide a name. We call it my plugin. So now a plugin template is created. And we can go um, to add this to the virtual environment. This is quite simple. pip install minus e. Minus e indicates that we're just linking the source. This is the advantage is if you change your code and restart the server, um, the changes will directly affect the solution and you can quite easily test your code. So my plugin this is the name of my plugin and then you see here successfully installed my plugin last step is as we say cbpi add we need to activate this for craft beer pie my plugin and now the plugin is active so basic configuration done uh, let's have a look into the uh, plugin code a plugin um, is a standard Python package, so containing a setup.py, setup.py as a standard file where you configure name, version, description, author name, also email, URL, and here also you can configure dependencies. It's a great advantage. In the previous version of CraftyPy, it was quite compli uh, complex to um, um, to add uh, external dependencies. So here we go to the Python standard way. It's much more easy and convenient. Um, next one is we have a subfolder, which has the same name as a 
parent folder. Um, this is um, our location where we put the code. Um, we have a config jumble with some basic information that we have the name and some, uh, the supporting version. It means this is supporting version 4. And we have an init pi and um, the init um, pi is generated with some example code by default. It comes with a web extension um, example, a custom sensor example, and with an actor example. Last but not least, in the init pi, it's very important to have a method called setup. This method gets called by a CraftPy call during startup, and um, here we can activate and register all our components. Okay, so let's have a look on the first um, extension point. It's a custom web extension. Um, this is quite useful if, one, if you want to bring new HTML pages um, to Craft BFI or new server functionality. So, for example, um, we have here um, some request mapping. Um, where we say um, on slash is the root pass, we do a get request and this method has got get called and it's forwarding uh, to the static index HTML. So in the initializer of this class, um, you get the CBPI call, we take the pass and we register this web extension under the prefix CBPI UI plugin and we define a static folder. And this static folder is that one over here. So you can reference uh, logos, HTML, CSS, and whatever you like. So if we start up the server, we should uh, find um, the page under um, slash CBPI UI plugin. So and we'll have a look on this now. So for this, we need to start the server, CBPI start. So, and um, in the log file here, you can see that the plugin was loaded successfully. Perfect. So, server is running on port 8000. And we remember here uh, the prefix of the URL is cbpi underscore ui plugin. So, let's give it a try. Oops, sorry. Make it back. So, we go here. And then we go to CBPI UI plugin and hello world from custom plugin. So let's do a quick change. We stop the server again, control C. And um, let's say we want to map this to hello world or hello CBPI, hello CBPI, for example. We save the code, we start the server again, go to the website, and now under this URL nothing is found, and we go to, what was the name, hello cbpi, so now our endpoint is listening on hello cbpi, perfect. This was a quick example how to extend CraftBPI with custom HTML pages. So in general, uh, CBPI is um, based on AIO HTTP. It's a Python framework for for, yeah, for web uh, for web servers. Um, you can add additional request mappings. Uh, have a look into the documentation how use get and post and delete methods as well. So let's take a look to the sensor. Um, extension very important. A sensor needs to extend a CBPI sensor. Uh, you can provide some custom parameters. These parameters um, can be configured via the UI later on and will be provided during startup as props. So, next you can have custom actions. Custom actions are there. For example, at runtime, you can call these actions to, for example, reset the sensor or calibrate the sensor whatever you like. And then we have, it, this is very important, we have an asynchronous uh, method called run, uh, that you normally put in a, a loop while running through. Um, and in this simple example, 
it is just doing uh, a random in uh, creating a random int value between 0 and 50 and push this um, data to the clients then wait for one second and repeat um, get state is returning the state by default oops by default it's um, returning the uh, a dictionary with value and self value but you can extend this and put additional values there okay um, let's customize the code a little bit let's say for example we want to print this uh, random value out in the uh, server console let's say print um, hello from server oh no from sensor so current value value is oops and then we say format self value and that it we start the server with cbbi CBI start we go to the website and now we go to the default ui um, we switch here to the hardware configuration we select the name my cool sensor and then i have here my custom sensor safe and you see it here in the background it's directly starting and um, yeah pushing random values to the client so the name of the sensor comes from here my custom sensor is using this python class so we stop this and let's have a final look on a custom actor in generally uh, generally it's the same like sensor custom extra uh, actor needs to extend cbpi actor um, you can have actions to trigger some actions at runtime and you have some default actions like on and off uh, and run run is also an asynchronous method for example here you are able to um, create a, a, a loop when you have some actor which is listening on some particular state um, for simple gpio actor this is not necessary so you put in pass um, so nothing is executed and just use the on and off um, yeah methods so let's put here some code let's say we do log info hello world. hello from actor one on and let's say hello from actor two off so we start again um, we go to the browser select the actor my new actor and let's say my custom actor safe and now for example can toggle it here in the background you see off and on off and on so that's quite simple to extend perfect so last step we can use this actor and sensor on our ui we go to the dashboard we go to the edit mode we have the actor put it here my new actor and we want to have some sensor data we select the sensor so let's say we put it this size oops this size and we save and leave the edit mode and now we can toggle the actor on and off and we see the sensor data is constantly coming in that's it for the moment for extending craft stay tuned for further videos